Hey everyone, Gen3D Tech here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Vanser Gemini series mice, which consist of the Pollux and the Caster. The Pollux is an ergonomic mouse and the Caster is a symmetrical mouse. Both of these mice are pre-production mice that were sent out to reviewers and testers alike. And in this uh, video, I will go over the things that I liked and didn't like about the mice and go over the changes uh, that they are making due to the feedback from myself and other people. And uh, just so you know, th those mice, uh, the final production mice, have shipped out to resellers. And I've been asked uh, quite a bit on when these are going to go on sale. And I've been told before Christmas, but maybe sooner. So keep uh, an eye out on my socials uh, because I will mention when these do go on sale and provide links for those who are interested. And without further ado, let's get into it. Anyways, I'd like to first start off by thanking Vanser for providing these uh, two review samples of the Gemini series mice, the Pollux and the Caster. Uh, there's a close look at them. Obviously right here, this is uh, the symmetrical mouse, the Caster, and the Pollux is a uh, ergonomic mouse. And, and actually, if you take a look at this, the shape is uh, quite unique. I, I'm, as you can see, I got a bunch of mice right here. And these are ones that are similar, but there's a bunch that are closer to the caster, but the Pollux is a little bit more of a unique mouse, and it's mostly due to the way it flares out to the right, right here. But anyways, uh, we'll go into that. But first, I just wanted to show you the mice and uh, let you know these are pre-production samples. And like I mentioned in the intro, there are things that are changing on the uh, retail copies. And I'll go over those things. And hopefully I'll get a hold of those. And I'll do a in-depth review of those two mice once I get the retail ones. But today we're just going to go over, not, not briefly, but not also not as in-depth as I normally do. Uh, anyways, l let's first start off by talking about the, the, the caster, which is, a, again, a symmetrical mouse. And you can see that the shape is uh, basically very similar to the uh, Final Mouse Starlight 12. Now this is the medium, and it's very close to the same size as the medium. Now it's, it's also very similar to the Vanser Grexa, which is just a clone of the Starlight 12, which was uh, one of his first mice that he sold underneath his, his own name. And then of course, uh, the Starlight 12 is very similar to the uh, Viper Mini, and this is the uh, Deluxe M800 Pro. And then the uh, G-Wolves Hottie S, also very similar. And then the uh, Glorious Series 1 Pro. And then with the Polox, the, uh, the mouse that I find that is the most like it is the uh, Fantech uh, XD5. They're actually pretty similar. The only difference, well, I mean, there's other differences, but the main difference is the way they flare out. As you can see, the XD5 flares out this direction and the Polux flares out this direction. So they're just kind of opposite on the end. You can see they're very similar size. The uh, hump is just a little bit taller on the XD5. I'd say the XD5 is just a little bit bigger and it's uh, also definitely a heavier mouse. And then some, uh, again, some smaller ergonomic mouse are like the uh, Pulsar X-Lite Mini and then the uh, Extrify M4 Wireless. They're all, you know, just symmetrical uh, mice that are based off of the same style mouse. So if, you're, if you use any of these three mice, you'll be very familiar with the way this feels. But like I said, the very front of it feels quite different. And... Uh, I would say out of all four of these mice, uh, the Pollux is, is my favorite shape-wise. So the main difference besides the shape is the uh, the weight. The, uh, the Pollux is, uh, on my scale, 57 grams. And uh, the uh, X-Lite Mini is 56 grams. The, these other two mice are quite a bit heavier. So the closest weight-wise is the X-Lite, but... Uh, the x lights definitely taller and a little bit thinner feeling. 
the M4 and the XD5 definitely heavier. And like I said, if you like these three mice and you're looking for a mouse with 3395 sensor, then you might want to look at the pull-ups. Uh, now, again, with the caster being a symmetrical mouse, if you're a, f a fan of the uh, Starlight 12 shape or um, Viper Mini, then uh, you'll probably be a big fan. Uh, this also comes in at 57 grams, and uh, these two mice are quite a bit heavier. Uh, I think this was 52 on my scale. 47 grams and 50 grams. Uh, so all three of these are actually a little bit lighter than the uh, than the caster, but at 57 grams, it, it's definitely a, a light feeling mouse. So to get into the specs, uh, both mice sport the 3395 sensor, and both mice have uh, all TTC Gold everything. So TTC Gold uh, mouse wheel encoders and then switches on mouse one and two and the side buttons are all TTC gold. Now, I would like to add that these are production samples, like I said, and a bunch of them were sent out to reviewers and uh, pros and other testers and a lot of feedback were given and there's a bunch of changes that are being made. Well, not a bunch, but a few important changes that are being made from the feedback that we uh, gave. So the first thing that a lot of people did not like are the side buttons. So the side buttons are not the most tactile, they're kind of mushy, and the back side button sometimes will get stuck. One thing that, that they did is they worked on the side buttons and uh, they swapped out the uh, TTC gold uh, switches and put in uh, Huano switches on the side. The other thing that people found that, and I agree, is the uh, side mouse buttons on the Pollux are too high. So they uh, are moving them down lower, somewhere around here, I, I believe. It should be uh, pretty much the same as it is on the uh, caster. So th that's definitely the, the biggest complaint is the position of the side buttons and then just the quality of the side buttons. So those things are being addressed in the final uh, retail copies, which is a good thing. The main uh, mouse one and two, I believe, are still going to be TTC Gold, which I don't have a problem with. They're kind of light switches, and I think they're quite good. They're nice and tactile and very fast. Uh, yeah, I actually like the switches a lot. And then the uh, scroll wheel, as you can see, it's kind of got this rubber on there, and it's very tactile. It's got those little hearts and spades. He's just a... Uh, a big fan of of poker there's a nice little story behind it so it's actually significant meaning to him so I, I think that's cool that he works it into the design yeah so I really like the score wheels so that's gonna stay the same I don't have any complaints about the tactile feeling of the uh, mouse one and two buttons on both mice yeah the build quality on these mice these things are, are tanks I mean, you just squeeze them. They just feel really solid. You r No rattle when you shake it. Yeah, so they're very, uh, very strong. The, uh, the skates, I think, are pretty good for the stock skates. There's a little drawer right here where you can uh, hide your dongle. So it's kind of got like a hybrid design where it's solid up here and split off here. And then it has a nice uh, skate around the sensor. Same over here on this mouse. In the box, you do get uh, an extra set of skates. And uh, you also get a, uh, a nice uh, gaming sleeve. And then, of course, the uh, front, you get USB-C on both mice. Now, the other thing that people really didn't like is the coating on both mice. And both mice actually have different coatings. The, uh, the black coating on this uh, Pollux mouse, it's really a fingerprint magnet. And it actually reminds me of the coating on the Fantech XT5 that I showed. And also the um, 
GameSense MVP Wireless. They're both uh, both those mice and this mouse are definitely fingerprint magnets, and they're also very slick feeling. And I personally kind of like a slick feeling mouse, but a lot of people don't like it. I, I get it. So they are going to change the uh, the coding on both mice uh, after getting a bunch of feedback. Now. This one's even slicker feeling, and it's kind of got this pearl finish. It it actually feels almost like automotive paint. It's it's actually a really good paint job, and I guess it was really difficult to get this paint job on this mouse. But a lot of people said they do not like it. So, again, I personally like it, but I think I'm a weird one when it comes to that. I don't mind kind of a slick mouse. You do get a, a nice set of uh, grips uh, with each of the mice. So the, I didn't think that was that big a problem. But uh, again, the coating is being changed to a uh, more preferable coating that, that they believe that more people will uh, like. But I don't have the retail mice in hand to give you a final verdict of what that's like. And again, I will try and get a hold of those. But... Uh, I'm, I'm sure that they're going to be a lot less slick because that was the main uh, issue that people had. All right, so in the box, you get a few things. You get an uh, extra pair of skates, instructions. Uh, you get the uh, some nice grips. And then uh, there's a gaming sleeve. This is the, the white one that goes with the uh, white caster. And then there's a, a black and purple one too somewhere on my desk. Uh, that goes with the Pollux. And uh, I've I've tried gaming sleeves before. And they've always been too tight. But this one's nice and loose. So these ones are actually really nice. It's a nice little value. I mean these things are uh, sometimes you know, $15, $20 a piece. And you get that in the box. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, the dongle. Which is kind of interesting. It's pretty large. As you can see. And uh, you may have seen on Twitter they have a version of this that has like a screen that shows like the polling rate and, and different statistics. Uh, that's going to be uh, on the, uh, the pro version, but this is like the base that I think that's going to be based out of. And there's just kind of a sticker right there, but it doesn't come with this version. It, it comes with the pro version, which comes out later next year. And there, there was some confusion about the polling rate uh, there was some speculation that these mice might have a 2K polling, but I confirmed that these only have uh, a 1,000 polling hertz, uh, just like other 33.95 sensor mice. The uh, pro versions uh, w should have more than that. But uh, again, that probably won't be until next year, and uh, those will be more expensive. Really, uh, a 1,000 uh, polling hertz is still... Uh, um, great for most users and there is some issues with 4k from my testing it really uh it can be a uh, system intensive so if your computer's not up to snuff i definitely wouldn't recommend going over especially 2k polling it tends to be the sweet spot for most users if you have a high-end pc uh, 4k 8k is very doable but there's also just some bugs with it a lot of things to be worked out but uh, a thousand polling hertz the difference between that and 4K and 2K and 8K, it's really small. And the higher you goes up, go up, the uh, there's more diminishing returns. So, I mean, it is there is a measurable difference, but it's really small. Uh, again, at 1,000 polling hertz, I think for most people, it's going to be plenty. And, and at the uh, price point of these two mice, which, by the way, is $89 each, these are uh, pretty good deals when you... Factor in all the, what you get, like the gaming sleeve, the the skins, um, and the uh, extra set of skates. They're really nice mice. Now, I really would like to be able to judge the final product because there's a couple of little nitpicky things, like people mentioned, like the coating and the the side buttons. The side buttons for me were the biggest issue. Uh, I didn't mind the coating so much, but a lot of people, the coating was definitely a deal breaker. Now, these, even though this, uh, say that here's the uh, Atlantis, which is 55 grams, and it's, this is only two grams more on my scale, just the way that 
that this is just it feels like a more of a dense mouse is this is just spread out a little bit more so it actually feels uh, a good bit lighter still a very light mouse like you're not going to get tired using this mouse and uh, game performance wise uh, both of these mice for me uh, I did really well uh, especially the caster I'm just a little bit more used to this shape and uh, yeah it's it was a really good mouse in game uh, I really like the the clicks and uh, just the feeling in my hand I, I have uh, 19 by 10 centimeter hands so this is a nice medium sized mouse and I think this will work for most people if you got small or even large hands so it's a good uh, overall uh, mouse for most people now th this uh, ergonomic mouse the Pollux it might be a little too small for some people definitely if, if you like um, if you got small hands and you want to arg then this might be something uh, that you might be very interested in and this is probably the one I've had the most questions about and the most inter interest in from other viewers I do like the mouse quite a bit and uh, again I, I, I think it is a, a cool mouse are both these mice top five mice for me for this year it's it's really I think are on the, on the cusp now I think uh, with some of these changes that that could definitely um, put them in the top five but uh, I'm gonna have to see those in person before I, I give a, a top five recommendation but um, definitely if if you're a fan of the Grexo or the Starlight 12 and uh, you want an affordable mouse at a lightweight with a nice sensor in that shape then this is a, a really good deal for sure definitely get this uh over the uh series one pro which just i do not like this mouse at all it just feels really cheap there's just something off about it uh, even though it's lighter uh, yeah and this is actually m was more expensive than the uh than the caster i don't recommend it um the M800 Pro is definitely like $45. And that's a great budget mouse, but and uh, but it's it's done up to the quality of this mouse for sure. The Starlight 12, I do love that mouse also, but wow, it's it's almost $200. So it's uh, you can get two of these mice for that. Now, if you you can get the uh, um, Fantech XD5 for pretty cheap nowadays. Think you might be able to get this for like fifty dollars um, nowadays maybe sixty dollars at the most it's got a 3370 sensor uh, so if you are on a tight budget this could also be a pretty good uh, alternative but I definitely like this uh, uh, Pollux uh, better than the XT5 even though the XT5 is definitely an underrated mouse and uh, hopefully the Fantech will be doing update to this if this is a little bit lighter had a newer sensor in there i think it would be a, a much better mouse anyways uh i'm gonna briefly uh, go over the software and then i'll i'll do the uh, conclusion so anyway here's the software so uh, right here is the demounts time uh, you can set it at zero or one i got it set to one millisecond so right now and you can raise it of course unless you're having double click problems I uh, keep it at one or zero uh, you can do the key bindings here and set save your profiles right there and then right here you got uh, different DPI settings which you can customize you can change the colors so you know which one it's on lift off distance is set to one millimeter out of the out of the get-go and um, you can set it to two millimeters uh, ripple control angle snapping I recommend leaving those off you got the mouse parameters right there and then uh, pulling rate uh, initially I think is set to 500 Hertz and uh, you can set it to a thousand which I definitely recommend but I mean really that's that's about all there is to it real basic uh, software is very similar to companies like Pulsar but basic to the point and that's about all you need uh, all in all we got two very uh, solid mice that got uh, great sensors good weight balance uh, under 60 grams and it possibly with the different uh, coating because I think this coating 
does add a bit more weight than they anticipated. It is possible that maybe the uh, the weight on the uh, final uh, mice that will be for sale to customers could possibly be lower, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and again, when I'm talking to Vanser, there is some um, language barriers. So sometimes uh, the translations aren't always correct. And sometimes what I understand isn't always exactly uh, his intention. So from what I told you, is what I believe that I understood from him, but uh, I can't 100% guarantee everything that he told me is correct. Just, uh, again, it might just be a translation. So I will try really hard to get a hold of the, the retail uh, mice when they come out and uh, do a full review on those and compare them to uh, the pre-production ones that, that I have right here. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments or you can uh, DM me on Twitter. I'm very active there and I got uh, lots more reviews. Uh, I'm going to try and get out a review on the um, uh, Darmio Shark uh, N4. Um, this mouse right here. Very much uh, enjoy playing this mouse and also I'm trying to get a review out on the cool master mm712 also uh, a great mouse and then uh, tomorrow i'll be getting in the uh, xfi uh, m8 which looks like a very uh, promising mouse and also ninjutsu uh, is also sending me a the sora which I, hopefully i should be getting either this week or or next week i'm not 100 percent sure but could be any day now and uh, also, uh, I'll be reviewing the uh, G Wolves uh, Hottie Ass Ace and uh, 4K. I've got both of those and I've been testing those uh, quite a bit. I also have the uh, 4K dongle for the Razer mice. So I've been testing the uh, uh, Viper VT Pro and then uh, the uh, Death Ladder V3 with the 4K dongle. So uh, I might do a, a video on 4K at some point. I also have a, a video coming up where I'm going to do uh, top mice of 2022 and uh, I'm going to have a, a couple other uh, uh, fellow um, creators that are going to also make cameos on that video. So it should be a, a very cool video and that'll be around the middle of December when I, that one releases. Also still plan on going to Alaska and doing a, a, an install of Star, Starlink up there and making a video out of that. Anyways, uh, that's it. Um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you liked it, please leave a, a like. And if you haven't subbed yet, I definitely appreciate it. But if not, no big deal. And uh, I guess I'll see you on the next one later.